In this video, we're going to show you our best tips on how to photograph bluebells and other forest flowers. Hello everyone, my name is Jacob Bors. I'm a landscape and hospitality photographer based in West Sussex in Chichester. And in today we are here in the forest where I'm gonna share with you my favorite tips on how to photograph bluebells when they are in the season. When it comes to bluebells, timing is everything. For example, for us here in UK, the season starts at the end of April and then goes all the way to the mid-May. But that doesn't mean that the bluebells will blue and show the nice blue carpets for three, four weeks. Every forest has a different peak based on their rain, sunshine and so on. So what you really want to do and what you need to make sure that you do is to do your research before you go into the specific location. For example, the location we're heading into today, they have their own Facebook page where they keep posting updates about how the forest looks. So that makes our job much easier to find out when should we go and visit the forest. But I don't want you to be too worried about all of this. Internet nowadays has all the information, so make sure that you jump on your Google, do your research and everything will be out there. So now we know when and where to go and we need to find out what gear we should bring with us. So let's head downstairs and let's check out what gear we're going to be bringing for our Bluebell adventure. Okay, so now we know when and where to go for our Bluebells. And before we head for our trip, we need to find out what gear and equipment we should take with us. So I have lots of things on the table. I don't worry, you don't need to take all of that. Neither you have to have all of that. And we will take it step by step to show you what would be ideal to bring with you for your next trip to the forest when you're going to be trying to capture bluebells or any other forest flowers. So let's start with the basics. So first of all, of course, everybody had a mobile phone to take with them. If you're gonna take a mobile phone with you, still the rest of the tutorial is just as handy as there are some really cool tips which can help you with the composition and so on. So that would be a real starter. Then we can take a camera with us with some kind of kit lens. This one is 14 to 42, but anything like 24 to 55 or any other lens will be just as cool. Um, something you can take with you, uh, turn it to auto and get on with the shooting. It will adjust everything to yourselves. And most likely with the latest cameras, with the kind of computer and uh, electronics which are in, the result will be just as cool, but you will have much less chances and opportunities to edit the pictures. So this will be good to start with if you take a camera with your Kindle lens or mobile phone, it will be a starting point for your trip. So when you're ready to step up the game, I would turn my attention towards a camera with some different lenses. So the, my first choice would be this 55 millimeters. Reason being that this is wide enough to keep a nice proportion between my foreground, middle ground and background, and it doesn't have too much of the distortion. If you go too wide like this, 12 to 24, what's gonna happen is when you're gonna try to capture a big scene, the wide lens will actually make the carpet much more spread and the effect of the nice color and the nice carpet will be gone. So don't go too wide, stay somewhere around 40 or 50 millimeters. If you're ready to bring more lenses, then I would go for a zoom lens. Just like this one, 24 to 240 is really ideal. The reason being is that if I step back and I really zoom in on the bluebells, they become even more thicker. The carpets is even more beautiful, so it's really cool. What it also helped with is that the elements like trees and rocks and whatever you use, it makes them a little bit bigger and a little bit more dominant, so they can play a bigger role in your composition. If you have the opportunity, there are two more lenses I would bring with me. I would go for something really wide, if you can, like this 12 to 24. And the reason being is that when you wanna shoot from really low, then you can put on this super wide lens and you can get really close to the blue bell and you can make it really dominant. You can almost use something like a fisheye effect. So the blue bell will be really big and really dominant and it will look super cool. It will not look as natural, but what it's gonna do, it will give us another piece and another image into the story we're gonna try to create when we're gonna be in the forest. And the fourth option and the lens you can bring with you would be a macro lens. This is 70 to 300 and it is really cool for shooting a nice macro pictures. If you have opportunity to get a macro lens with you for the photo shoot, for the bluebells, you will see you can really create some really nice pictures. If you're lucky enough and visit the forest after the rainfall, really nice drops on the actual bluebells, we create amazing photos. And finally, three more pieces into our gear puzzle. So we have a tripod, a remote release, 
and polarizing filter. So, why would you bring a tripod and a remote release? Obviously, when you go to the forest, depending on the day, um, but even during the day when it's really bright, um, when you're inside of the forest, there is actually lack of light. You can get dark really, really quickly. So, in order to keep the ISO around 100, you want to have a tripod with you so you can rest the camera on it and get the best shot possible. Now, obviously, when you have a tripod with you and you want to avoid any shakes and any blur, you're going to bring the remote release with you and that way you can take the pictures without actually touching the camera. And finally, the secret tool of many forest and woodland photographers, the polarizing filter. It's a really cool piece of the kit. You put it on the top of your lens and that way all the colors in uh, times like autumn and spring will pop out even more. They will bring out the colors of your bluebells and it's a really handy piece of kit. So if you have a chance, make sure you get one because the pictures will get and move to another level. And there you have it. Don't get too overwhelmed with the amount of gear you see on the table. The most important is that you get out there and start shooting. Grab your mobile phone, grab your basic camera, or if you can, grab all the gear I just explained you, and we're gonna head out there and capture beautiful bluebell photos. So now we are in the forest, and I wanna share with you the best time of the day on when to photograph the bluebells. So first of all, sunset, sunrise, some of the best times when you can come as the sun is nice and low and you get really nice sun shining through the forest and create a really nice dramatic atmosphere. Now, if you come during the sunrise, you also get a chance to get some nice mist and fog. But you need to be careful because when you photograph the mist and fog, you want to make sure that your camera is set on 100 ISO to make sure that you don't have any noise because these kind of elements create lots of noise in the post-production later on. The next great time on when to photograph bluebells, it's actually midday. And the reason is that when the sun is on the top, it actually creates quite lots of blue light, which brings lots of saturation and lots of drama and lots of kind of heavy color out of the bluebells. So the midday is also quite good time when you can capture the bluebells. Another good time to photograph the bluebells is just after the rainfall. And the reason is that when the rain comes, they actually, it actually wakes up the bluebells, it brings the saturation, they look nice and strong, and they look great on the kind of pictures similar to micro photography or when you go really nice and close and try to capture the detail. So if you're in the area just after the rain, it will be also another great time of when you can photograph and capture the bluebells. Now let's move on to the composition. So composition in a forest. It's uh, very similar to your regular composition. You're looking for the similar elements as usual, for your rule of third, for your leading lines, and so on. One thing you have to remember is to beware of the clutter because forest can get really busy very easily. Kind of fallen branches and rocks and stones. And if there is too many of these elements, the scene looks really busy. So you want to look out for that as well. So when you're in a forest, again, make sure you put your camera on a tripod and make sure that you walk around to see what scene works the best. Use the path for the leading line, use the kind of lonely trees, they also look really cool. Another thing to remember, don't get focused only at the bluebells, because sometimes you want to really build the scene with many different elements, because sometimes you get the pictures just full of the flowers and it just gets a bit overwhelming. So when it comes to shooting bluebells, there are two or three different ways of how you can do that. The first one is to shoot them from above. Now for this shot, you're gonna need your 50 or 55 millimeters lens, and that way you can nicely capture the carpet of the bluebells. This shot also gives you the opportunity to use your foreground, middle ground, and background, and really create epic photos. The next way of shooting the bluebells is to actually shoot low. So get nice and low on the ground. And the reason being that when you shoot from the above, the bluebells actually look very delicate and they almost kind of disappear in the carpet of the flowers. But when you go nice and low, the flowers become more dominant and they become more of the main element of the scene. So bring your tripod down, get nice and low and start to shoot forward. Another thing what you can do when you shoot low is to use your really wide lens and place your bluebell in the middle or on one of the rule of third and create really strong composition. And a third and final way of how you can capture the bluebells is to involve the macro photography. For that we will need our macro lens and we will need to get really low so we kind of facing the flower. 
Now the way to do it is to use a focal length so you can do and make nice separation between the flower and the background and then place and make the bluebell really dominant in the picture. And that will create really cool and interesting photos. And this brings us nicely back to the composition. Because by the use of the three different approaches, we can actually create a story. We can use the storytelling of the trip we had into the forest. So we start and open the scene with a nice big wide lens and we capture the carpet. Then we go low and we make the flower even more dominant. And then we end the story with the highlight of the actual macro shot of the bluebell. And the final two tips before we leave the forests are keep an eye on your exposure and the histogram in a camera. The forest can get contrasted really easily. Obviously, you have a sun above and the shade from the trees. And you want to make sure that you come back home with the best picture possible. The second thing is make sure that you shoot in RAW. In RAW, so then when you get back home, you can edit and get the most out of your pictures. If you never heard about RAW, make sure that you check our blog and see the difference between a RAW and a JPEG image to find out what are the benefits of shooting RAW. And there you have it. So that was our little bluebell adventure. I hope you had a fun and I hope you learned something new. If you did, make sure that you like and comment under this video so we can create even more content like this. But once again, thank you very much for joining me today. My name was Jacob Bors, and I can't wait to see you again next time.